morning Transpac race fans. This is Dobbs Davis from Seahorse Magazine giving you the Sunday, July 26 race analysis of the 48th biennial Transpac race from LA to Honolulu. Opening on our tracker this morning, we're seeing uh, most of the boats coming in and converging into their final approach into the islands. Um, not very many boats uh, left out here behind. I was concerned about some of them taking up the rear, but uh, Looking over here, for example, Fortissimo, smallest boat in the fleet. They've uh, gotten up in the in the tracks of all the uh, faster boats and are moving along uh, pretty well at seven knots. It's going to be a very long race uh, for that team from Japan. Um, almost, well, probably will be over two weeks for them. They started uh, a week ago, Monday. Uh, so, but they are moving along, and that's good. Um, and up here, uh, Hokahe, Santa Cruz 52, they got caught in some light air early in the race, and they're uh, bringing up the rear, so uh, we'll see who's the, who's going to be the last one in, uh, but that won't be for another few days. Uh, pipe Dream down here, uh, anybody down in the southerly track um, got suffered by a little bit of light air uh, in the south, and so they're, uh, they're going to be coming in uh, in a couple of days as well. Um, and then also down here, Chimchin uh, is a gunboat 62. Uh, their, their choice of going south uh, as well is going to hurt them a little bit. Uh, we'll see in a moment on our weather forecast why, that's, why that could be a factor for them. But everybody else is moving along uh, pretty well, normal, almost normal trade winds. Um, just looking at the boat speeds of 10 knots and uh, 12 knots and so on, they're, they're moving along. So uh, I think everybody's enjoying Good trade wind sailing out there. The position reports from the boats uh, are indicating uh, pretty good progress. Um, a little summary here, I'll zoom in. Some of, your, of our division uh, leaders. The uh, uh, remainder of the, let's see, the division one boats were the 100 footers, and they're all in now. So uh, yesterday we had Wild Oats, and we had uh, Ragamuffin uh, and Rio. Uh, finishing during the day. Uh, Rio will be the uh, Barn Door Trophy winner, being the uh, the fastest monohull without use of any powered systems. Uh, the winner of the Merlin Trophy will be uh, Wild Oats, being the fastest monohull um, with uh, with powered systems. So we congratulate those, those two teams on a, a job well done. No records broken, unfortunately, because of the unusual nature of this race this year. Uh, but uh, everybody's in safe and sound. Um, a few other boats are starting to come in. There's uh, quite a long list. If you go to the website, you'll see uh, finishing times being recorded. Uh, one thing I want to alert everybody uh, to, and that's this uh, leaderboard feature on the tracker. Um, sometimes you see uh, this changing around. I've done some refreshing, and, and sometimes you'll see a reordering here, and I'm not quite sure if that's a glitch in the program. Uh, or what's going on. Now, Celerity is, uh, continues to maintain uh, their position as uh, on the top of the leaderboard in, in corrected time. Uh, however, these boats are still out there on the course, and uh, if you look at Grand Illusion's projected uh, finish time, you can see that uh, it is less, <clears throat> less in correct, projected corrected time uh, than Celerity. So, so they still have a chance, as does Pie Wacket and anybody under that corrected time, actual corrected time for Celerity. So the sleds out there um, have a shot at, uh, at an overall corrected time win, as does this TP-52 Bolt. So we just keep an eye on them over the next day when they make their final approaches in. Um, but but just, be, uh, uh, just be careful with this leaderboard. I've seen some things on it that uh, don't, <laughs> don't exactly... Uh, coincide to reality. Your real, the best resource and the official resources here, this leaderboard is, is off the website. It's on the right column uh, that you can access because these have actual times. Um, there are some projections, of course, in here taken from the yellow brick, but, uh, but these are, are more, um, more official. So uh, this, this is really your final, final and uh, last place to go. Now, 100-mile um, tracker here and boats making final approach in. Uh, Sweet Acoli is a Division 7 boat, um, wood boat built in uh, 1976, a Bruce Farr design uh, built here in Hawaii. So uh, they're coming in, uh, Dean Treadway and his team have uh, done the race many, many times on this boat. It's an old, old Iowa design, but, but actually uh, still quite fast. 
Um, Creator, the J105, one of the smallest boats in the fleet, team of four. They're going to be uh, happy to be getting in. Um, and I believe, where is it? Alpha Puppy is out here. Maybe they're down here. There they are, Alpha Puppy, 1D35, another small boat with a team of four. Um, they'll be happy to get in. They're uh, only 25 miles out. We'll be getting their 25-mile uh, reporting uh, coming in uh, here shortly to race headquarters. Um, so, you know, congratulations for a, a, long, a long race for them. Um, but, uh, but they'll be coming in soon. And the next boat in uh, is Ross Perlman between the sheets. We just had um, Extreme H2O, H2O, the first multi-haul, uh, finished just about an hour or two ago. Uh, so we welcome them to Hawaii. Um, Bad Pack will be, uh, it's an STP-65, Tom Holtis' boat. That, this boat will be um, looking pretty safe as a corrected time uh, uh, Division II leader. Um, so amongst all the, uh, the fast monohulls uh, that, that don't have canning keels, um, this uh, bad pack looks like looks pretty good. Now they they're still uh, 44 miles out. It's it's uh, going along at 13 knots is pretty good. There's there's good breeze out there, not particularly fast. Um, but when I get to the weather part of this program, you may I'll explain how this may speed up for them um, and make their uh, their their current projected um, elapsed time position uh, pretty safe. Uh, Fado will be uh, also pretty safe, I think, as a uh, corrected time uh, victor in the Division Zero the multi amongst the multi-hulls. Um, we'll see why this angle is going to be beneficial for them. Uh, Sleeper Division 8 boat, uh, Andiamo, another Division 8. And then the schooner Martha. Um, this caught our attention early on in the race because uh, of all the sail area and the way they're configured uh, did very well in reaching. Uh, going downwind, of course, they're not quite as fast. Uh, so I don't see any uh, corrected time possibilities for them, but uh, these are the boats from, that started uh, almost almost two weeks ago in Division 8. So moving over to weather. Uh, here's what we uh, have now on Sunday morning uh, here in the islands. As you can see, uh, big areas of, uh, of lee, um, uh, islands blocking the trade winds. Uh, extending well off to the west. Of course, that's off the race course, but it, it shows you a little bit about uh, the, uh, the power of the trades uh, sometimes when they're, they're stacked up here uh, on the windward sides of the islands and there's pretty good pressure, but then in the lee, uh, quite big areas and zones of, of uh, light winds. Um, but this is where our finish area is. Boats coming in uh, this way. Now look at this bend to the breeze. It's uh, kind of interesting. It's gone from northeast to east to southeast. So this is why I think anybody who's coming in from the north uh, will get headed, and that, of course, means higher speeds. Uh, so uh, anybody on final approach coming in this way will um, probably be speeding up and doing well. Good compression and good pressure coming in on the low angle, but it is dead downwind, um, and therefore not quite as fast as, as coming in at a hot reaching angle. If we look forward in time, you can see the breeze uh, bending back a little bit to the east. Uh, this is for, what is this, late tonight. And then going out just a little further uh, for the mon Monday during the day, it then accelerates goes and shifts back to the southeast. <clears throat> so um, there'll be a little window there for those that uh, have come in uh, from the uh, from the south to have some good pressure and maybe a little bit of the the left shift east or east shift to uh, to get them in fast but then the breeze goes back to the southeast overall it looks like final approach coming in uh, from the uh, from the northeast will be uh, quite good uh, with for good high speeds into their into their finish um, this big zone of uh, lighter air is a, could be a little bit of a problem for uh, the boats coming in uh, taking up the tail ends of uh, divisions uh, four and five, um, but we'll see. I think if they get back into here, they, they should be in good shape. Uh, another story that's um, a little little disturbing, really, um, was last night. I'll move this photo over into the viewer. But uh, we've got a high surf uh, advisory here in Waikiki, and on the south shore of the islands, there's quite high waves. Uh, last night, um, 
whoever was in this boat didn't time it properly getting at the alloy channel as you can see uh, ran up on the reef uh, that boat's not there now fortunately we just had a look out the window but uh, this this shows you what uh, what's waiting here for those that are finished today uh, they actually have to wait between sets to get out of the uh, alloy channel um, because the sets out here are, are a good five six sometimes seven foot waves uh, and then sometimes actually breaking across the channel. So this is a, um, a little <laughs> a little feature awaiting those uh, after a long race to come into the Alawai Harbor. Move that out of the way. Um, so uh, keep track here of the 100 mile uh, tracker. This, this updates every hour uh, and, uh, and gives you the final approaches of the boats coming in. Um, Let's see, last thing is here on our webcams. We showed this yesterday. Uh, here's the finish line webcam off of Diamond Head. Um, you, you can see, uh, get an idea of the size of these waves. Uh, it's much bigger than yesterday. Uh, it's due to, due to be, uh, have these wave conditions today and in through tomorrow. Uh, so every now and then you'll see a set come in and it's pretty impressive. Uh, and then if you're paying attention and you want to match this with the tracker, you may see um, uh, boats coming across the finish line. The other thing you'll see today, uh, starting in about 10-15 uh, minutes, um, is a, a paddleboard race over to Molokai. Um, believe it or not, there's uh, people taking paddleboards uh, across the channel, and so there's been an alert put out by the race organizers for anybody finishing uh, the race to uh, watch out for the paddleboards. Uh, so, just a, another another feature here of uh, of sailing in Hawaii. So with that, I'll wrap up the show for uh, Sunday, the 26th of July. We congratulate all those that are here already in Hawaii and uh, wish uh, good winds and Godspeed to those who are uh, making their final approach in the islands and those that are out on the course. Uh, for Seahorse Magazine, I'm Dobbs Davis. I'll say so long for now and see you tomorrow. <laughs>